So guys, I said I'd do the test on the injector just to see whether there was a difference in the voltage settings. So as you can see, the old tatty knackered injector on the 100 volt setting. Press the button. 44. So it's failed the test. Okay, let's do 250. See what happens. Again, not much output. Forty one, so doesn't seem to be a mega change. This one's not making a noise. I have had them making a noise in the past. So something I did notice though, which might be interesting for you, is something to watch out for. If you have no leads connected, so if you're not making a proper connection in this instance on a hundred volt ten, press the button. Scale goes all the way over to the left, but the voltage reading actually reads 113. Just something maybe to bear in mind, just watching that graph at the top when you're testing, just to make sure you are actually connected. So here we are with the nice new shiny injector. 100 volts. 109 volts, so obviously you can see the needles over on the right-hand side, so it's connected. What a decent result. Now that's a pass. Let's turn it to 250. Okay, so it's not quite going there. It's 245. Had a bit of a splatter about there at 500 volts. Not making a noise like I've heard some of them make on the car. Well, like you say, there's a new injector. I'm assuming these are good values. Who knows? Well, let's reverse polarity like we said we would do. We'll do it on the good one, eh? I'll take one for the team. So, here we go. Let's just swap them over. There. There. Okay. Let's go all the way back down to 100 volts. Okay, so there is, a, there is a slight delay in how long it takes, as you can see. Press it again. You go work that time. Okay, that's 250 volts. Again, you get a dop, and it does reach. Right, let's switch it back the other way. Let's hope that I haven't killed it. It'd be nice if I hadn't. But hey ho. Let's see what's going on. Put it back to 100. Took a couple of goes there. Back there, let's see what this one's doing. Bad connection. There we go. Swap them round. Didn't seem to make much difference on the knackered one. So, I'll have to maybe test some more good ones. 
Let's just do it again, just for the sake of it. Wonder if I've killed this and jacked it live on camera, who knows. No, seems to be all right. Let's swap it back again, just to see what's happened. See if you can catch it again. Press the test button. 47, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference going the wrong way. So guys, I said I'd do this, but obviously I tried to do the test using that cotton clamp and we're just getting nothing with it. So what I've actually done is I've hooked the uh, the old amp meter up in series. We're just hooked in the back hole we've got, as you can see, it's just a normal jump lead. So it's not, not the most perfect test, but hopefully it'll give us something. On a hundred volt setting, we've got a peak there, as you can see, 1.2, again, peaking and it holds it like 0.54 milliamps, is that? Someone want to correct me on the scale, I don't know. So, we're on to 250 volts now, and again, so, press the button. Right, okay, so we have actually doubled in the amount of milliamps. Okay. Again, we moved on to the 500 volt scale. Press the test button. Okay, so we're about the same sort of roughly milliamps as we were on the 250 volt scale. So, you know, as we can see, wasn't much change in the voltage output either. So, maybe is my meter faulty? Who knows? Just out of curiosity, we've gone all the way down to 10 volts. There's a little bit. 25 volts. We've got a little bit more. 50 volts. A bit more. 100 volts, 250, 500. So it does show that it's putting out a little bit more milliamps each time it goes up, but as we can see, very little, very, very little milliamps. So if anyone's got a 1000 volt one and wants to have a go doing the same test, then on a 500 volts and let me know if my meter's bollocks, then let me know.